How's it going everyone? It's Lee again from Function Dynamic and in today's video what we'll be doing is covering pivot tables inside Zoho Creator. Now up until now what we've been doing is using list reports and while these are great for a lot of reasons, so for example go in and uh, print the data or export it as a PDF or CSV, this doesn't really exactly give us a high level view of the data. So while we don't have that many records in this particular application, you can imagine if you're doing several hundred sales per day, if you want to do things like group um, total amount of sales by salesperson, it's going to be very encumbersome very quickly. And that's why we use pivot tables. It groups the data together, aggregates it, and makes it really easy to view the data you want. Now, to begin, what we'll do is head over to application. And before I jump into creating, there is one thing that is extremely important that I want to point out. So for that, I'm going to head over to settings and then go over to schema builder. Now, when creating pivot tables, it's very important that you choose the correct um, table to base it on. So this is our basic schema right here. Now, with pivot tables, we can only create reports and pull fields from tables that are um, one table away through lookup. So for example, uh, sales has lookups to uh, customers, to salespeople, and to line items, um, but it doesn't have a direct lookup to product. So if we want to pull product uh, specific information, um, such as um, the cost, we can't pull it from sales. Um, for that, we would create a pivot table based on line items but then again if we do it on there then we can't uh, pull in uh, salesperson specific data or customer specific data so it is always important that you select the correct table um, from which to build a pivot table now in this case what we'll do is we'll um, base it off of sales because we want to see how much each salesperson has sold and doing it here will give us access to that information. Now, with that out of the way, what we'll do is head over to uh, the plus icon to add new, and it's a pivot report, so we'll click here and select pivot table. And like we just said, we're gonna base it off of sale, and we're going to say call the name report sales by salesperson. And we're going to create it. And uh, this is the interface that we get when we are creating a pivot table. Uh, we have the available columns right here. And um, essentially what this is, is it's just a drag and drop. So let's uh, drag over the salesperson, for example. We can pull it into rows, columns, or data. Um, typically what you'll do is pull it over into uh, rows. And what that will do is it's going to create a new row for each salesperson. And then um, the, if we move, for example, if I move it over to columns, as you can expect, it's going to break uh, it down into columns uh, for the salespeople. So uh, there's a lot of flexibility. Typically what you see is rows. And for data, what we can do is uh, throw in the total over here. Now the data, unlike uh, the rows, uh, gives us aggregate functionality. And, what, and we'll jump into that. So by default, it gives us some, but we can drill down and see all the different um, ways we can slice the data. So we can even do average or uh, the median or mode. Those are applicable in this case, sum is what we want and each time you make a change just go down and select generate graph and we can see that it appears here and uh while we could call this a day right now there's a lot of uh hidden feature features and quirks about this that i want to cover so let's take a look at um adding new columns so in the bottom uh left hand corner so underneath my head there's a button called add column if we click it, we can see this panel show up right here. And it doesn't really give us a whole lot of options right now. Now, 
this is something that at least early on and even now from time to time it catches me off guard um, when you are creating it so for example I haven't pressed done yet so if you're in the process of creating it and it doesn't actually exist yet it doesn't know what is really looked up to it so we can't pull in data from other forms to get access to those forms what we would do is just push done it's going to run its thing and then we'll open the form builder again it's a weird quirk um i know i don't like it and uh, but that is the way it is right now hopefully in the future that this tip becomes irrelevant but if i go back to add column we can see that we now have a list of uh, columns that are existing on the uh, application and we have the ability to add them and we can see that we now can pull fields for um, from the forms that are looked up to the uh, looked up by the sales form so for example I can pull in the salesperson name and let's just do that okay so that is the ability to add columns from other forms and so we can group database off of that now there's a few more other things we can we're not just limited to a single column now this is a little confusing because as you can see the data um, for totals is uh, listed as a column although it's not in a column and that is because each of these aggregate fields will be listed as a column beside the main row itself so if I go into uh, date for example and pull it down here we can see that it creates a new column so that is nice now we're going to keep this here now what this what we can do for if we want a specific count for anything is just pull over field like we just did so in this case I know that for every sale there is a single date so what I can do to give me the number of sales that a per person did is just by dragging over no, not a count field but just a field that I know there is one of on the form itself and so in this case we can use date now at this time you're probably looking at the columns and um, wondering if we can change these and we can so let's take a uh, look we can hover over it and see the pencil icon if we just click that we can rename this to whatever we want so we'll say total sales and date count um, since we're using date to give us a record count um, we can just call this number of sales and that gives us the uh, numbers we need now there is one last piece of functionality that is really useful as well and this is the filters so up at the top we can see filters and user filters now functionally these are both the same they will both drill down on data based on specific filters um, provided so for example if I bring in date I can um, show um, show data in the pivot table only within a certain range that I specify so that's the same for filters and user filters what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear this all and get rid of that um, and user filters is the same thing except that this gives you um, or the user rather the ability to specify and drill down themselves so you can think of filters as a default and user filters as uh, a way for users to specify and if I hover over here I can do a few things so I could change the uh, display name and I can choose um, the component type so we have a date range selector where you're cho choosing a start or end range now for dates that can sometimes be all right um, oftentimes though what you'll see is a relative period and this will give us some options based off of the current date so I could say today I could say this month I could even do, do it by quarter so I could say this quarter or previous quarter and as you can see there's a whole lot of other options and you can add 
new custom ranges. So it gives you the example 10 days. So all of those are uh, applicable and customizable from within this field. I can just press OK down here and then um, click here to generate the graph. And that is set. So the last thing you might want to do is change the colors or the sizing. So we have uh, theme layouts up here. Um, this doesn't need a whole lot of explanation. It will apply a uh, color theme, although you can go in and add in custom um, colors as well. N now you can also zoom in to give you a larger size for display. And you can also uh, change the font if you want. Uh, so I'm not going to choose Comic Sans. Uh, I'll just change Arial. You can see a slight difference here. And then just push. Uh, and then we can uh, see that it is applied. Now, the last thing that I will point out, and one that is very, very hidden from the user, is conditional formatting. So for example, if you want numbers to be a different color or based on a based on a, a certain threshold, for example, um, we can apply that th through this menu. Although looking around, we might click into here, we see nothing. It's not very clear. And to apply them, what you have to do is right click the cell you want or right click the cell in which you want to apply the um, columns formatting to. So for sales, let's say if I have sales under $500, I want to show it as red. I don't think that that's acceptable. So what we can do is uh, right click it and we see this uh, box that shows up that gives us a few options. For this though, what we'll do is select uh, conditional formatting and uh, here we can apply um, the condition and uh, the formatting options so for this let's just say uh, we said less than 500 we're going to change the font color to red and once we push OK we can see that it does apply the formatting as so. So to view it inside the application, what we would do is close it. And then of course, access this application. And that it gives us the pivot table report. Whether you already have a creator application, are looking to get started, or just want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation to get pointed in the right direction, always feel free to reach out to us at Function Dynamic by going to www.functiondynamic.com, click the Contact Us link, and fill in the Get Started form. Once filled in, you will automatically receive an email with a link to schedule a time that works best for you. This was Lee from Function Dynamic. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.